Hello. I guess this is for here. Dual micing it. All right, so uh, because we're doing pretty quick lightning talks, I'm just gonna jump in to kind of show the platform and code right away instead of going through like a whole presentation here. So I work at a company called Union AI. Uh, we're an orchestration and inference platform. Most people use us for training their complex AI models or running their complex data pipelines to train AI, AI models. Um, a lot of computer vision, a lot of self-driving car use cases. Uh, we're built on top of a open source orchestration tool called Flight, F-L-Y-T-E. Has anyone happened to have heard of that before? You have, awesome, you have, have you used it? No, yes, you do like it. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> That's another similar uh, orchestration type platform where you're, you have tasks, sets of tasks, and you usually want to do something in that task, like uh, process data, train a model, and then trigger like another task. And you can have those scheduled. Uh, you can have triggers when something happens to kick off a whole pipeline. Um, so Flight is uh, widely used. It's used by like thousands of people in production, um, and also talking about large language models, like a lot of people might be interested in here tonight, I assume, who's interested in LMs, building something with LMs, probably most people. Um, LinkedIn switched like all of their large language model training workflows over to Flight recently, um, and they did a talk with us too about like what that whole architecture looks like, so if you want, you can go check that out on YouTube as well. Um, you'll get a uh, end result that looks kind of something like this. Um, so this is like a pipeline where, um, this is one of the examples that I shared in the doc. So if you go to the Discord, you can actually go clone this and do this yourself. This is training a large language model. In this case, it's kind of a lightweight BERT model. And we're downloading data set, downloading the model, using that data set to train the model, evaluating the model, and then saving the model in this case over to a Hugging Face Hub, but you can pass those artifacts around to different places. And uh, you can embed uh, data visualizations directly in your pipeline. So that could be like any interactive data, charts or anything like that, like if you wanna have um, a version of what your data looks like for a training. Um, so every time you run this workflow, it's versioned, it has features like caching. So if you wanted to launch this whole workflow again, um, and you wanna read this data set because it didn't change from a cached thing, you can easily do so. And to get all this kind of stuff that's built in, uh, what you're really doing is just adding decorators around Python functions, hopefully as you kind of probably would be programming them already. So you can see we have a, a function that's downloading data set here, and then in this task decorator, we are saying the container image we want. So every one of those tasks that you saw, each node is a task, um, that's containerized. So you define like what that environment looks like for it. Uh, do you want caching, cache version? Um, and then you declare the resources directly in your code here. This is really powerful once it's implemented in your company. Usually people, um, like it empowers your AI engineers or ML engineers to have access to infrastructure without having to go through any extra setup or like talking with an ops person. And you can run experimentations extremely quickly. So it's a pretty common story we'll see when people get set up that um, you'll go from you know, weeks for experimentation to days. Um, and that's really all it takes to kind of add this infrastructure here. Um, so this is building a whole pipeline. Again, this might be interesting if you want to fine tune a model. For a hack night, I don't know, how interesting is like a reproducible pipeline for people? Maybe not that interesting. Maybe it's interesting if your uh, idea goes to production. Um, but we do also have something, uh, so like I mentioned, each of these is containerized, so it takes like a minute to spin up. Uh, we do have something called Actors, which is a fast, um, or sorry, a, re a long running stateful container. So you can spin it up, and I'll share these examples out again, so you don't have to like read all the code right here. Uh, but you can declare the environment you want once it spins up, so that in this case, it's like downloading a fee three model from Hugging Face. Once that happens in about like six minutes or so, then you'll be able to uh, query it and get responses back in a few seconds. So you'll have a container, spins up, and then it kind of lives, and then you can query it. So if you want to uh, have access to compute, like there's GPUs in here, there's A100s, there's the pipeline capabilities. So if you want to fine tune a model, it might be interesting for a project tonight, or if you want to host a model from Hugging Face um, and query it, that potentially could be interesting as well. But I think also Hypermode will have cool hosting options that you can look at. That's kind of my lightning talk. So super brief, um, straight to the point, hopefully, of like, here's a little bit of code. I'll share this in the Discord, and you can dive in. Uh, but if you want to build a pipeline, um, maybe fine tune a model on GPU resources, you can check us out tonight. Cool. If you have questions for Steve, I'll definitely put it in the Discord.